Hey everybody, welcome back to Gommel Day 3 coverage. We've got Top 8, Melee side, and Ultimate side coming, but we missed you yesterday. You said your throat was like absolutely shredded, so we want to finish up our Artist Alley interviews. Uh, tell us who you are. Yeah, um, my name is James. Uh, my tag is Solonum. Uh, that's why I run Solonum Customs, um, and we're here providing controllers, repairs, maintenance for uh, all the players at the tournament. Awesome. So I'm pretty sure you were hands down the busiest booth. So not only your voice, but also like we just couldn't get a moment with you. So tell us what it's like. Uh, you, you told me earlier it's your first time at a major. Tell, tell us what it's like doing in-person repairs, having to work on controllers while people ask you questions about them. Yeah, it's it's been super hectic. Uh, yeah, my first time ever vending a major. Um, I definitely didn't expect it to be that busy. Um, I'm very glad though. Uh, it's it's been a, it's been a pleasure. Um, I'm very thankful that I have two people with me. So I've got another guy working on controllers with me, um, and there's one guy who's doing a lot of button swaps, talking to customers a lot. And I don't think I would have gotten through the weekend without them. So uh, definitely shout outs to them. Uh, but it's been great, you know. Um, a lot of uh, a lot of players that you know I've watched online. I'm I'm a huge melee guy. I've been playing melee competitively since 2017. Um, so being able to work on people's controllers that I've you know watched online, uh, follow their tournament runs, it's uh, it's been a whole lot of fun. Um, and I'm definitely looking forward to doing it again soon. Yeah, I heard Amsa uh, got some controller fixes from yeah, you guys. Yeah, Amsa Amsa got his controller fixed up. Uh, we got Zane hooked up last night. Mango hooked up. Um, so it's been it's been a blast for sure. So how do you, how do you even get into this side of old, of of, of uh, the Smash community? Because we we've talked to commentators, we've talked to TOs, we've talked to players, and just casual spectators. But this is a, a very niche side of like one of the most important aspects of our scene, really, and that's the controller. It's like an extension of our body. So want to tell us a little bit about how you got into controller modding? Yeah, definitely. Um, actually, it was shortly after my first ever major. So I came to Gommel, I think, in 20, 2017 or 2018. Um, and shortly thereafter, I was like um, starting to get a little bit better at Melee. Um, and I realized, you know, my controller isn't doing what I want it to do. Um, so like most people uh, who run into that, when you don't have someone in your scene that can do those kinds of things for you, um, opened up my controller, you know, started working on that. <clears throat> and, uh, and local people, you know, local people in my scene. I'm a TO actually in Newfoundland. Um, so uh, started talking to people about, you know, these controller mods, you know, this is going to make your controller feel way better. People were super interested in it um, and it caught on. And it blew up really, really fast. Um, started doing a lot of sales online. So I do like uh, drops through my website. Um, but obviously nothing nothing like offering mods in person. It's like a completely different experience. Um, but yeah, t some top players like picked up my controllers, you know, said that they feel they felt great. Um, and and yeah, it's been it's been business ever since then for sure. What was the first mod that you worked on, or like controller fix that you worked on? Do, do you start with Snapback? Is that where most people like learn first, or? I think nowadays that's like where most people start because that's like a between all Smash games, it's like a, a big issue. Um, notches were always what I wanted to try, and that's kind of like my main thing nowadays okay. uh, is notches. Um, so yeah, I, I had a few bot shells for sure. Uh, I had some <laughs> some terrible first first attempts. First attempt, yeah. yeah, but uh, yeah, that's where I started. Well, the uh, at this point now, the mods they go wild. I mean, there's trigger plugs, there's lubed stick boxes, there's like the uh, bald buttons, you know, shortened shortened presses, tactile Z buttons. Uh, what's is there more? Do you think that there's some innovation that's like left out of the GameCube controller or have we have we min-maxed the hell out of the GameCube controller and now we're moving on to newer and better things which is what I wanted to ask you about earlier do you think that the box controller is like a threat to the GameCube controller so two, two questions uh, yeah right uh, um, I think that's I think that we're reaching a point where we're like really perfecting the GameCube controller there's some incredible incredible people um, in our community that are really pushing the envelope with uh, innovating new technologies. Um, the FOB uh, GCC is is some of the most incredible work that's come to the GameCube controller in a long time. Um, and I think that they're really going to, you know, um, push forward what people will expect out of a controller. What is the, what is the FOB? Oh, yeah. Um, so the FOB is a, a new type of board for the, like, it'll go into your shell, into a GameCube controller. Is this like a boom wave? Goomwave-esque, they try to solve some of the same issues. So like uh, in the firmware for the FOB, you're able to remap your, um, recalibrate your notches, you're able to remap buttons, 
Um, you're able to do a lot of like snapback filtering, poet emulation, all through firmware. Mm -hmm. Um, but the biggest uh, improvement with the FOB is that they don't use potentiometers anymore. So the biggest issue with GameCube controllers is that your potentiometers wear, wear out over time. And it's hard to get like a consistent feeling GameCube controller mm -hmm. for an extended period of time. And especially in Melee, a very input demanding game, like yeah. um, you want a consistent controller. Yeah. Um, and with the FOB, uh, you attach magnets to the stick box. You have sensors on the board that mm -hmm. can read the magnetic fields from those magnets. Um, and they never wear out over time. Mm -hmm. um, and that's also really great because it leaves a lot of the repairs in the hands of the consumer, so the player. Mm -hmm. um, all the mods that, or all the repairs that would need to be done to a fob, the player can do themselves. Mm -hmm. So even if they can't assemble the fob, like there's a lot of soldering that goes into it, even if they can't do that, all of the maintenance, they can do themselves. Mm -hmm. All this to say, just given how old Melee is, it's an analog game. You're dealing with like electrical impulses and you're dealing with uh, these uh, components of the GameCube controller which are limited in, in manufacturing scope. Like we only have so many T3 motherboards or whatever, right? Uh, uh, and so back to the box controller, if you wanted to give a little bit, I know you don't have any, you don't work with them necessarily, but um, how's that recent shift been? Like, uh, what's it like? Yeah. Um I think that there's obviously a lot of discourse about uh, boxes versus controllers or like Game GameCube style controllers, um, but I think that they're a necessity for our scene. Um, I think that um, ergonomically, like there are people that benefit from that who wouldn't be able to play melee otherwise. There's you know plenty of examples of players in our in our scene that you know got on box controller they probably wouldn't be playing melee otherwise, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think we're reaching a point where it's going to be normalized between uh, GameCube controllers and boxes where there won't be uh, advantages to playing one or the other. I think in a perfect world, um, you get the same, um, you, you don't get any advantage from picking one or the other. Um, it should be an even playing field and I think that we're very close to approaching that. Um, and the more conversation that happens uh, about that, you know, between modders, uh, box developers, TOs, whoever it is, um, I think that we're reaching that, um, and I hope to uh, I hope to be a part of that, and oh, yeah. and for that to you know uh, reach like a stabilization very soon. Cool. Yeah. I mean that it, it involves you too with the with the new motherboards that are coming out and stuff like that, right? Um, okay. Let's close this off. Last question: Who's gonna take ultimate singles if you know anything about it, and who's gonna take melee singles, which you obviously know about? Yeah. Um, Always rooting for Riddles in Ultimate. Riddle, Riddles, my boy, he swung by the, the booth the other day. Um, just a fan of watching him online. Uh, Melee. I want to see a Moki dub, you know? Yeah, I want to see I want to see a Moki dub. Um, Zane is like a safe bet, yeah, you know? You're that. Zane's a safe bet. It, but I think between Mango, or Nuns in top eight as well, there's just so many players to root for. Uh, but at the end of the day, I think, you know, I think a mango, a mango dub at the end of the day, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Yeah. That's what I'm looking for. Awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. That was great. Yeah. Check, check. Good? All right. Well, yeah. All right. Welcome back to Artist Alley Interviews. And I'm here with? Yves Bonsoir. All right. So I, I hear a bit of an accent. So where are you from originally? That is a big accent indeed. <laughs> I'm from Quebec, uh, specifically from uh, Gatineau, which is just on the other side of Ottawa. And I do a lot of uh, conventions around Toronto, Montreal, and uh, all, the, all the places in between. Awesome, yeah, I was actually born in Côte Saint-Luc, so we can talk about that later. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so lo local, we got some local, shared local familiarity. But let's get into your artwork. Um, How do you get into digital art, digital media, and what inspires you? Well, I've always been drawing pretty much all my life. Uh, I've, I'm doing some comic books, comic book works, uh, which I haven't brought to this event because this is not exactly the type of, uh, uh, of crowd for it. But yeah, I've been doing digital work for a bit more like than 15 years. Uh, like everyone, I started with uh, you know, pen and pen pencils and uh, paper and stuff. And then I had my first tablet, I think at, in 2006 or seven. 
so I was able to draw a bit on the computer. My computer wasn't super strong, but it was super powerful back then, but eventually I um, invested in more powerful technology. And now I am using uh, a Wacom Cintiq, mm -hmm. which you may be familiar with, which has been much a screen that you can, you can draw on. And I've been doing my art on, uh, on this material since then. Yeah. Uh, so what got you into specifically drawing this fandom, you know, related to gaming and, uh, uh, you know, did you grow up gaming? Is that, is that something that, like, got you into this? Uh, yeah, the first game I've ever played was Super Mario Brothers on the NES, so that's, that's like a long time ago. And I've always had some kind of fascination with Mario and, uh, and Nintendo in general. I've always drawn like little comics of Mario when I was young. And uh, then eventually I created my own characters and my own comics. But then, uh, being a young adult, I kind of went back to video games. And uh, I went back in full force. You know when you grow up and you're kind of nostalgic for your younger times? So that's pretty much it. And uh, I discovered that there was a community on the internet, a community of people who really liked Mario or just, or just video games in general. And I started doing my things, uh, doing uh, artwork on DeviantArt back then. Mm -hmm. And we're talking like in 2005, so that's a long time ago. And people had an interest in what I'm doing. And that's kind, that kind of started, kick-started me into doing uh, more you know, fan art. Uh, things I really like to do things like group posters of like, a lot of characters in one single image And this is pretty much what got me into uh, You know making the rounds on the internet on the like very young internet back then and uh, I've been doing that ever since yeah, uh, Smash is the perfect scene for that. I mean, even the main Smash poster with all of the characters, it sounds like something that, like what you're talking about, like this collage art, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, like the one in Ultimate. Yeah, I love this type of poster. Unfortunately, I don't have any Smash Brothers poster right now. I used to have one uh, with uh, all the female characters that I named Smash Sisters. Uh, I am currently working on an update for that because it was an old poster. So you see, I always like retire some posters and yeah. bring in new ones. But yeah, it's kind of an in between, and I'm kind of, I'm kind of sad that I couldn't finish it for this event. But there will be more events. I will uh, hopefully come back uh, to uh, the next uh, get on my level eventually. So I see a very unique piece uh, that we haven't found anywhere else and that's an entire deck of cards featuring every single character in Ultimate and that how many characters is that? Uh, I know there uh, well I know there are I think 84 characters in uh, Smash Ultimate and uh, my, well this is actually an old project of mine this deck of cards I started it in, to, in 2014 uh, back just before Smash 4 was released and I was like, okay, my goal is to have a functional deck of cards. I want to have the most character possible, to try to fit them in the, in the lowest amount of cards possible. And back then I was able to do it. I had like 56 cards, so four jokers and the rest are regular cards. But then Nintendo decided to add one DLC and then another one and then another one and then eventually like 20 more DLCs. And I was like, oh, okay, oh, am I gonna fit all of these uh, into the deck? So right now I have a deck with 84 cards. Uh, so it's got like the 52 classic cards, the four jokers, and 20 something. My math is not good right now. 20 something B cards, don't, which don't have a function, but which, uh, you know, if you play classic card games, you can just not use or change the rules, whatever. So basically, my ultimate goal with this was to have everyone. When you say everyone is here, this is what I wanted with this deck to be a, to make it like an art, artful deck, but also a functional one. Okay. Uh, so to close off, do you do you follow Pro Smash at all? Uh, I'm not following super closely uh, the Smash uh, Pro the Smash Pro Scenes, Thank you, <laughs> like the Smash community. I'm like in, on satellite, so I, I know the big names of the. Uh, you know, I follow some some of the big news. I'm more into uh, I'm, I'm more into like the classic Mario community, as in uh, I love. I love speedrunning, I love Super Mario World. There's a huge Super Mario World community on uh, Twitch uh, who plays like very, very hard Super Mario World games. Oh, Kaizo. Kaizo, yeah, I am a huge Kaizo fan. And speaking of which, I have a poster that is specifically Kaizo. Oh, cool. And, oh, cool. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. 
And also, by the way, yesterday, uh, this is the weekend of SCDQ. SCDQ and uh, th there was a Super Mario World uh, Kaizo race oh, nice. uh, last night. Isn't there a Super Metroid Kaizo too, something like that? There is. I think it's today. Yeah, nice. But um, yeah, so, and I was involved in it. So that was really cool. I made some level designs and I also made some, some promotion work. There was a poster for it to announce the event. I also made it. So uh, I am pretty involved in this community. And yeah, uh, more, more as a satellite on Smash. I like to wander around and see what's up, what's happening, but I'm not like so, as invested as I am in Super Mario World, but I'm still super glad to be here and to see all the activity going around. Honestly, it's good that we mentioned it because we've been talking about Smash this whole time, but I would, I mean, I'm a a vaguely familiar with this community too. Would you say that the popularity exploded with Super Mario Maker? Yes, I was, but, well, I was always fascinated with level design. And I think Super Mario Maker has always been Nintendo's response to uh, ROM hacking because ROM hacking, you know, uh, Super Mario World is the, is the, it's probably the most act Mario game. And Nintendo doesn't like that, of course. So it's kind of their response. And of course, now it, it made making levels available to like a huge part of the population. And I think it actually made, made it worse for them because now there is more and more ROM hacking and uh, the Kaizo scene. So the super hard Super Mario World scene, it's stronger than ever. Yeah. If you go, if you go to uh, the games done quick uh, Twitch account, you'll see like how big this is now with all the work that was involved in the in this race that we had yesterday. And there's some really big names like Grand Pooh Bear who yeah. are all involved. And I mean, yeah. these are like in in this scene, quite big names for a, a community that was so niche, and were just like filled with just like troll levels or like these YouTube compilation videos yeah. in the early days of gaming YouTube. That's what I remember. I remember I want to be the guy yeah. and Kaizo levels where people who aren't necessarily in the scene would go in to get trolled. And, yeah. and But these videos blew up and now we have a scene where, I mean, you're getting a million plus videos on the Super Mario Maker levels or Kaizo levels. Exactly. So yeah, yeah. It kind, of, it kind of evolved beyond, you know, haha, I troll you, I just put invisible blocks everywhere. It pretty much evolved into a community of people who just want to uh, challenge themselves with hard levels, but not you know, not making fun of other people who play your levels, but, you know, having fun together. And also pushing the game to its limit, right? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, because... That's the goal of speedrunning, right? Pushing the game to its limit, push, pushing the player to their limit, and also uh, pushing the game mechanics and the game engine to its limit. So it's like, it's always a game of where can you go with that yeah. game. And I'm pretty sure there are other, um, other uh, series that are like that. I know, I know that Pokemon also has the, the Nuzlocke challenge. Sure. Uh, they also have their own version of the Kaizo challenge. Yeah. So uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty cool to see all those challenges being like brought upon on, uh, on classic video games like that. It's really fascinating. Yeah, it reminds me, from my own personal experience, it reminds me of rhythm games. That's kind of what happens in rhythm games. Uh, every year or so, like Sound Vortex will get a, uh, will get an update, and it's a new level 20, but it's like the hardest thing you've ever seen. Oh, yeah, so, they, because keep, people keep beating it and want harder stuff. Mm. I think this is the nature of competition, and that's what we're all here for. Mm. So do you think that com competitive drive like really fuels your work? Are you inspired by that? Oh yeah, absolutely it does. Like I said, I made that poster. Uh, I like to get involved in, uh, like I said, the SGDQ, I got involved with my arts and stuff. And I, I, I guess just being in events like these one, like Comic-Con, Fan Expo, etc., um, it allows me to meet other fans of this, the same stuff that I like. And yeah, this definitely fuels my passion because otherwise I would be making it for, 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 my, for myself and then I would be like, Okay, uh, I'm done now. But having other people to geek to, to geek out with, yeah. it's uh, nice. yeah, it's pretty much like. Uh, <laughs> oh, you're not gonna ask me about politics? Yeah. Oh, I will absolutely. <laughs> I, I absolutely will. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back to Gommel coverage. I'm Sean. I'm with Lena. Uh, and we are starting our Artist Alley uh, interviews over here at this booth. Some very pop art inspired, very bright and flashy. Uh, at mostly waifus and like anime girls. Yeah. So anything you want to say about your like influences and what got you started on on this kind of side of, uh, of, of art? Um, I actually started with zine fairs like TCAF and Canzine and 
other like small indie press places in Toronto. Um, but I am also inspired by other things. I'm inspired by like fine art, and I'm also inspired by like um, gamer degeneracy. So I try to like bring all of those influences into my work, um, and I kind of just like seeing what people are passionate about and interested in. Yeah. Awesome. So do you want to go more into detail about the zines? Because I see I see two of them yeah. over there. Um, I know I know of it from uh, like a, the political side of things. Like um, there's a anarchist uh, library in in Montreal, for example, that is just powdered with them everywhere. So, uh, like, what got you started on that? And is there a sort of uh, some neat like? subculture of writing those zines that uh, you might be able to give us more insight on? Definitely. So um, I like writing stories first and foremost, um, and that's kind of how I got into art, I think, uh, is through comics um, and just through personal storytelling. So um, a lot of my zines are personal to me, but one of the zines that I have here I made with my friend Gus, um, and we did a collaborative zine together. So I really like how there's just like different opportunities um, for ways to like um, share in information and uh, another zine that I have here is kind of about like a breakup that I had in relation to like Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley uh -huh. so I'm kind of just um, interested in like blending all those different experiences. So was Animal Crossing and Stardew Valley kind of a cope like a coping mechanism? <laughs> yeah yeah honestly a little bit and I'm I like thinking about like you know, in those games, you kind of have your life together and you're like, you know, you can't really go backwards in progress. It's very hard to. Um, so, you know, it, there's like some interesting lessons and in like real life analogs or like escapism to be explored there. Yeah. So what are your favorite sort of fandoms that inspire your art? Uh, I, I don't recognize all of the characters here. I mean, that's Adventure Time, right? I see some. It's like a Universe, oh, but it's universe, it's by right. someone who like worked on Adventure Time. Yeah. yeah. So so yeah. T tell us a bit more about like what fandoms inspire you. Yeah. So I was really really into fan culture when I was younger, um, and I still am, though to a more anthropological degree now I would say. Um, and I really like things made for girls and gays. I would say like I really yes. like shoujo. Um, I really like. I don't know, I like the fashion element also of like manga and anime and stuff. Um, and a lot of my work is like Revolutionary Girl Utena, a lot of it is like Sailor Moon. Um, but I would say that nowadays I don't try to like uh, churn out art for like a specific fandom. I only make art when I like really, really f am feeling it. So that's kind of the approach that I take. Yeah. So uh, do you have like a sort, do you have a following of any kind? Do you, do you promote on, on social media or are conventions your, your go-to for selling your art? Um, I'm actually more active in the fine art scene in Toronto right now. So um, right now, today is actually the last day of an exhibit at X Space Cultural Center that I'm doing with my friend Kyle. Um, so that's all like a very different situation. It's like, installing paintings and drawings and stuff like that um, and that's what I like to focus on but I find that I get bored of things really easily so it's like nice for me to also have this just like jump between stuff you got to follow your heart basically yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, so are you at all familiar with the smash scene I love smash and this is my first major so um, I'm really excited and like I really got into watching competitive smash um, over the pandemic because um, I was watching a lot of Mars videos oh, yes. um, and I was really mesmerized by the way he was moving with like Zero Suit Samus and I was like, whoa, I didn't know you could do that in Smash. Like, this is crazy. I need to watch more. And then I like um, really, really got into it and I'm excited to be here. Yeah. I think uh, part of the animation style of Smash, they went all out with Ultimate and really gave these characters character and how they move. And Zero Suit, I agree, is like so fluid and just like uh, very creative. And these animations are beautiful, so I can I can definitely see that inspired in your art. Sheik too is another character I think is like so fast paced and uh, very powerful, you know. So that's that's great. I think Nintendo has kind of always been on the forefront of making powerful female yeah, characters. Beautiful, polished. It's like super super polished. Just yeah. So who's gonna take Ultimate and Melee singles? Um, I'm rooting for Cola because I'm a fucking huge Cola fan and I love watching Roy. Um, I love watching Goblin too. Like, um, those are two of my favorite players, I would say. Yeah. So just like shadow boxing, fast paced, just. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like watching everything. So no matter who takes it, I'm happy. Yeah. So no local uh, support here at all. Riddles, sorry. Oh, yeah. Who's your man? 
My main, um, I'll play anyone who's like pretty. Oh, I love watching Riddles too. Like, especially his Kazuya. Oh my God. Uh, so Kazuya print incoming? Um, yeah, yeah, obviously. <laughs> okay, awesome. So thank you so much. We'll have everything. Check, check, good. Hello and welcome back to our Artist Alley coverage at Gommel. I'm Sean and I'm here with? Uh, Chris. Awesome. So, uh, yeah, we're just continuing our cover, trying to get a word from every artist. Now, your art style, I think, is very cool and it's very particular. Um, all of these kind of follow the same bolded outlines, you know, popping out, uh, pop art inspired stuff. So what got you into into this uh, scene? What got you into creating artwork like this? Um, honestly, I've been doing it for prob like straight out of high school. Uh, um, so I kind of I actually started with drawing uh, manga um, and so like I've always kind of enjoyed the way that a lot of manga artists draw or color with um, like certain tools like Copic markers or whether it's like the dip and ink pens or G pen and so that's kind of like where that inspiration comes from for my artwork um, basically trying to emulate that um, as best I could and so that's it's carried over and obviously there's lots of other things along the way that's an influence my artwork but that's Pretty much the main thing that kind of like stuck with me. <laughs> sure. So I mean, the transition to from anime to to uh, video games isn't that big of a stretch, or that big of a leap. But uh, what what made you transition, anyways? Um. So I I actually bef around from like 2010 to 2014, um, or 20 sorry 2012 to 2014, um, I was published by like an indie publisher for uh, my manga series, which um, Okami Rai, and um, after that company uh, shut down, um, then I started making this change to doing, I expanded to doing all kinds of different stuff for our work. Um, and I started going to shows like this and that's pretty much how that transition happened. Um, through, when I first was tr learning to draw like more other stuff besides just anime or manga, um, I actually had a little bit of mentorship from um, a couple of artists from Marvel which helped oh, wow. with anatomy and stuff. So um, yeah, Ken Lashley, who's actually a local here in Ontario and Nick Bradshaw, who is uh, from New Brunswick. So, but they, they really helped me a lot with like an anatomical stuff and learning all of that. Um, David Ross is another uh, artist from Marvel who also helped me with that stuff. And it actually landed me um, a couple gigs at Marvel, which was fun. Um, so I've been able to, I worked on some of Avengers Endgame stuff, promotional work. Um, but yeah, and that's kind of like what's really helped me like really round out my my basically like arsenal for art, I guess. Um, but yeah, so yeah. So is the majority of your following you kind of uh, get to sell things at, at, at conventions, or do you have like an online uh, based following? Uh, is that what, like what, what which do you prefer? You know, do you do you like the online marketing side, or uh, you like going to conventions and traveling? Definitely conventions. Um, I I'm, I I mean I have both. Uh, it's a good mix. Online is easy because I get to work from home. For, I mean, I, I work from home for most of my work stuff, whether it's commercial work I'm doing too. Um, so that's nice. But I, I really do enjoy going to conventions because it's fun to meet people, meet other artists especially too. Um, and just like, you know, talk to people. And it's, it's crazy sometimes when I'll meet someone that actually follows me online, which is crazy. Yeah, right, right. So that, that happened a couple of times with me and the controller guys. Oh, wow. I'm like, I have bought buttons from you before. Yeah. Like, this is wild. So stuff like that is really fun, and I think that's an ex yeah, and I think it's an experience that um, is is exclusive to, to going to conventions like this, because and just that that um, experience with other people. So so are you, you're an, a Toronto native? You're an Ontario local? Yeah, yeah. I'm originally from Mississauga, um, but yeah, I now I live in northern Ontario. But yeah, so we're not northern, but you know. <laughs> so do you follow the uh, Smash scene at all? Or are you just here because the, the, the interests overlap? Or do you follow Pro Scene? Uh, no, I follow Competitive Smash pretty much like since I was at, like around high school age. Okay. Um, so like Melee starting with that. And I was pretty heavy into like PM and stuff too. Um, and yeah, Ultimate obviously. So, and I've competed like some of the shows like I, I've been able to sell at a lot of shows um, like other other majors, like I've sold at Evo a couple times. I've had a booth there, which was fun. Yeah, and so that was really fun. I've gotten to compete at Evo too. So stuff. So I, 
Um, and like the 2GG events that used to be in uh, California, like La Moretta, I think it was. And those those events I, were, I was able to sell at and also um, compete. So that was fun. And I'm, I'm like super into the scene and, and I, have, I have a rule with all of my artwork. Um, I won't draw, everything I draw, I have to be into it. So, because I feel like some, like I had experiences where I would draw stuff that I didn't really care that much about, but I was drawing it, right? And it, it just doesn't hit the same. <laughs> so, so ever since then I had that rule. So pretty much everything that you, everything I draw, I either read it or I played it or watched it. And Smash is probably the biggest example of that because, yeah, it's and just like video games in general. So, so who do you main in Ultimate and Melee, and who's gonna take Melee singles and Ultimate singles? So for Melee, I main Marth. Um, Specifically, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Um, like, Mar yeah, Marth is Marth is pretty cool. Um, but uh, and then for ultimate, I I actually I main Banjo, because um, Banjo Kazoo is my favorite game of all time. So, but uh, I secondary Joker because I like the way he plays, and Persona is awesome. So. so who's taking melee and who's taking ultimate? Um. Melee is hard to say. We, we, there's a lot of people here. Um, that's a good, great talent. So, uh, shoot, man, that's that's a good question. <laughs> um, so we, we've gotten uh, Amso, we've gotten Zane many times. I'm good. Course. Yeah, I think those two, those are those two are ones that I really like. So yeah, I would probably I'm say. That Mango pulls out. You know, Mango pulls it out. I I would hope to see Mango because you know Mango. Um, I would probably say I think Mango or Zane is gonna take it. Okay. To be honest, yeah, I do think. Ultimate? Uh, I'd like to see Riddles, because, yeah. you know, Hero. yeah, and he plays Terry, and I, and I pocket Terry, so, and I like, oh, you know, because, like, the FTC stuff is like, that's my jam, too, so, yeah, yeah I hope so. <laughs> awesome, well, thank you so much, that was great, yeah. Cool. Alrighty, welcome back to our Artist Alley coverage at Gommel. I'm here with... Fake Lemon, or my name is Richard, you can call me whatever. <laughs> awesome, uh, I'll go with Fake Lemon. I've been calling people by their tags all weekend, so I, I'll, I'll keep it going. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we've we've gone back and forth from you know controller modders and, and digital artists. Yeah. So uh, tell us a little bit about your art, artist journey and how you got to covering like Smash related uh, art, art. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I've always been, I, you know, like a lot of people, I guess, take art lessons as a kid, you know. Uh, took a bunch of art classes as a kid, and then, you know, it was always fun, but I never, like, really pursued it as much. And then, you know, as I got older, uh, I picked up a, <laughs> a Wacom uh, Intuos, like one of the small ones, got into digital drawing. They're so bad at first. I'm, like, trying to look up at the screen and look down at the tablet, could not figure it out. And then uh, I got more used to it and, like, really enjoyed it, you know? And then um, ended up going to, like, some art schools to, like, you know, pursue art a bit more. Uh, and actually, in high school, uh, on, I remember looking at like tutorials for like uh, flash animations, and then I did these um, rotoscope animations uh, back then, and uh, I posted it on the the SSBM uh, subreddit, and uh, they did really well. They got like 2K or like 3K upvotes at that time. I was like, Oh my god! Is it the Captain Falcon like kneeing? Oh no, that was a different. <laughs> okay, okay. But uh, I, was, I was a few. Yeah, I mean, eventually, like people started doing a lot of those. It became kind of yeah, a trend, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I'm trying to. If you describe one of them, I'm sure I've seen the it. The first one, the very first one that I did was uh, Mango and Plup, uh, where Mango clutches it out against oh, Plup. Oh, like of actual uh, sets. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I did like a. Sick. Yeah, well, it wasn't like the whole thing, but it was like that that one part where. Um, I don't remember which tournament, but I just remember it was super hype. Uh, Mango versus Plop, and Mango clutches it out with like a like like a narrow across the platform. It was on Pokemon Stadium. Up smashes. It was so sick. Anyways, I drew it, and then it did really well. And then I was like, oh, I'll do more of these. And then I basically did a bunch of those. And then that's when I started, I guess, developing like an artist brand. And then I did more like uh, art for like Smash and stuff. Um, actually, for Gommel, I did. Um, for, because I was working on those animations, and Tio Joe, I guess he saw those animations, and then I was at Canada Cup 2016, I think, yeah, 2016, Canada Cup, and then uh, I was just working on another like rotoscope, like in the in the venue, and then Tio Joe's like, oh, like you did those, I'm like, yeah, and then uh, I helped work on the uh, Gommel 2017 trailer, uh, which is yeah, really cool, yeah. So I got to do like the nun, uh, 
I'm gonna make history. I don't remember that trailer. I remember well though, because I spent hours editing. <laughs> um, sorry, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm, I'm new to Toronto, but Gommel is not. And uh, people have been waiting for Gommel to come back. I mean, we, uh, we've been hiatus since 2019, so it's great to be back. And uh, uh, it sounds like you have some history involved in, in Gommel, which is great because we talked to people who were like, yeah, I've been waiting for this tournament. This is like peak Smash Canada, you know? Absolutely, yeah, Gommel's definitely one of my favorite tournaments. It's like, um, yeah, I always felt like, you know, because you always see all the American majors. I'm from Canada, and you know, I always see the American majors. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're so hyped, they're so big, and like, like, oh, we don't have anything like that. And uh, but Gommel's that one place, you know, that I come to. I'm like, oh my gosh, yes, we have like a big event. You get to see all the top players. It's so hype. I love it every time. You know, it's so good. Yeah. What, what's your local? Uh, I'm from Ottawa, so yeah, we we have like a. It's not the biggest scene, you know, we have, but we're growing still, and uh, it's uh, not as big as like Montreal or Toronto or anything, but uh, you know, it's uh, <laughs> we're, we're trying to get bigger for sure, yeah. Ottawa Loco can pull out uh, people for Melee and Ultimate, or is it more like focused on one or the other? Uh, I'm not, again, uh, well, I'm, I'm more on the Melee side. I don't actually know too much about the Ultimate side. I know, there's a, I know there is a scene. If anything, it might be bigger. I don't actually know. Ultimate is just huge everywhere, though, you know, like, uh, but... Uh, you know, I don't really, I love Smash as a whole, like, including 64, honestly. I, I'm hoping to give some more love to 64 because it's not here in this year, but I uh, grew up playing 64 first with my brother. He's 10 years older than me. He would always kick my butt, you know? And uh, he'd like, oh my gosh, 64, the combos. I was like, yeah, but I love all the Smash games. It doesn't matter which one. I just want the scene to grow bigger, you know? So. I, I want to specifically focus on Smash as like a gr grassroots organization. Yeah. And it seems like this piece stuck out to me, the 6040. <laughs> I mean, this is hilarious, and it, the, the faces are great. We'll obviously get a close up of that for this section. But uh, I mean, that is like, it's not just a meme. Like, this is something, it's about like a cultural uh, zeitgeist of Absolutely. Smash. Yeah. As a, you know, you can talk to somebody who knows what, what is happening in this scene and just go on and on about all these things. So, what really, uh, what about the community inspires you to make, uh, make this kind of art? It's just definitely, you know, well, you know, as with any community, I feel like, well, actually, especially Melee, I feel like there's just, it, it, because we might be seen as niche, you know, compared to other things, because of that, there's like these like jokes that only we would get that like, that are just so much funnier because it's just, it's just like, you just walk by and you see like, <laughs> in the yeah, it's just like, and it's so funny because I'm sitting in my booth and I'm, I'm worried. I'm like, I'm not, like, I was like, I don't know like how many people like actually know, but like every few minutes if someone comes by like, oh, oh my gosh, 60, 40, that's hilarious. It's always, it's always nice to hear, you know, it's like, uh, um, yeah, I just, I mean, Leffen, you know, <laughs> said it first, you know, and uh, it was just, it was just really funny. I was like, it'd be fun to express that. And uh, yeah, I really wanted to show the, the, you know, the, 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 yeah, the both, you know, that, that's what I like to imagine what the community's faces look like when they're on either side of the situation. But, uh, yeah, so uh, definitely. So, yeah, so um, is the majority of your, like, uh, sales and uh, in terms of just, like, promoting your art, is that happening in conventions or is it more like online, people know you for your online no, work? mostly at conventions, yeah. I, I actually, the reason I avoided online is because I'm actually not too familiar with shipping or anything, uh, but I recently set up a shop, trying to figure it out. Some people actually, actually the mark, like this one really sparked it, like, uh, cause I posted on Reddit, People from the states were like, "Yo, like, can I get some stickers of that?" So I'm like, "Okay, I gotta open up a shop. I gotta ship these out." So I'm working on that right now. And you know, actually, it's really exciting because this is exactly like I, I love that. Like, what's like the most popular is like these kind of jokes. You know, the because it resonates with people. You know, and that's that's a bit esoteric, so people can kind of relate to it. You know, it's only this community understands Absolutely. it. Right? Yeah, it's exactly. Yeah. Uh, could you tell me a bit about this one? I'm, I, I'm not sure I understand the... Uh, yeah, sure thing. So, uh, this is, uh, well, this is the substitute doll from Pokemon. Um, oh, it's a move... Greninja. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and uh, Ultimate Greninja uses substitute. Uh, and it's a move that's called substitute. And, well, the joke here is that he's, he's a teacher. <laughs> so uh, it's a substitute teacher. And, and it's funny, because actually at a convention, uh, two people walked up and they're big Pokemon fans. And they're like, actually, we're teachers too. And like, they're like, so this is perfect for them. They, they grabbed two, yeah, it's That's really cool, yeah, so. Okay, so finally, are you following the pro scene at all for Melee? Yep, I watch, uh, watch the tournaments. I, I wouldn't say like, I'm like, like watching like intently on each of them. But you know, I, I love the pro scene. I watch the tournaments whenever I can get a chance to. And uh, yeah, big Zane fan. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so who's gonna take Melee singles? Ooh, you know, it's uh, 
I, I, because now it's like, well, Zayn was dominating for quite a bit, you know, but that's kind of back and forth, you know, so I, I, whoever it's going to be, uh, you know, I'm going to anything, but uh, wait, but actually, you, I didn't even get to follow the tournament yet, but Mango's here, right? Yeah, Mango. I'm hoping. Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping for Mango. Yeah, I want to. I feel like Mango hasn't had like a solid win in a while, and I'm hoping for Mango to just have like a big one. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely, yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for the interview. That was great. I really appreciate it. Thanks. That's great. Okay. Check, check, check. Good. Yeah, levels. All right. Welcome back to Gommel coverage. Uh, we're finishing up our Artist Alley interviews, and I'm here with. Rebecca, Rika. Awesome. So um, I see you've got a wide variety of uh, small items and, and big prints. So I just want to talk to you about your art. Like what got you into uh, digital art and uh, what got you into like making art for this fandom? Mm. Um, so I've been drawing since I was like 11, just watching anime, I guess. <laughs> um, it's a familiar story. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I took animation and design in college, uh, so now I work in the animation industry, but uh, I moved to the States and now I'm back in Canada, and when I came back, uh, all my friends were really into the Smash scene, so um, I started getting into it, and now I'm obsessed with P+, um, which isn't here, but still, uh, yeah. Anything that Nintendo is involved in, I mean... P plus is just pushed to the side, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. But is there a P plus community in Toronto? Uh, absolutely, yeah, yeah, definitely in Toronto and lots of the cities around Ontario. Um, I, like we have PM in our hotel room. We're just playing all day. But <laughs> who do you main in PM? Uh, I play Zelda mostly. Uh, are, is Zelda as bad in PM at? No. No. Well, she's still really bad, relatively, <laughs> but not like that. Oh, okay, okay. Not, not like, not like melee Zelda. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, so, so the Smash side of things we covered, but what about like all the all the anime sort of related things? I know there's a lot of crossover between the Smash community and anime, but uh, like, what are your main inspirations? Like, who, what are your favorite fandoms in in anime? Um, I really like idol animes like Love Live, um, Magical Girl things like Madoka, um, Genshin Impact, like I don't even play it anymore but I still love all the characters. Is there a lot of like lore that they publish that is not related to the game or whatever that you can enjoy? Yeah, yeah, there is. Mostly just characters. Um, I draw a lot of cute girls, so... <laughs> Um, okay, and uh, finally, do you follow Ultimate or Melee at all, like the pro scene? Yeah, mostly Melee, um, but I do follow both, mostly okay. Melee. So who's going to take Melee singles and who's going to take Ultimate singles? I hope it's Mango. <laughs> um, uh, Ultimate, I, I honestly don't know enough on who's good, but um, I think the one I would vote for the most is MVD. If he's even here? I don't think so, but but everyone's been saying riddles because of the hometown hero thing. Oh. So you can just say riddles and it's like a safe answer. Riddles, yeah. Nice. <laughs> Alrighty, welcome back to Gommel coverage. I'm Sean and I'm here with... It's Camilla. All right, Camilla, welcome. Uh, so yeah, we're doing, we're continuing our Artist Alley interviews and we, our eyes popped at all of these beautiful keychains. Um, in my first big tournament entrance, in my first round, I fought a solo inkling main with a keychain like this of his character and I immediately knew I was screwed. Like, I, there's no way. So do these keychains give you a power up or is that just like a faux legend? Uh, I like to believe that my charms kind of give that good luck vibe to all the players that come and represent their character. So that's what I like to do with my charms. And so how, how did you get started making these charms? Uh, and what's, like, what's the process like? Is it uh, epoxy or...? It is um, an acrylic um, base plastic that is used. Um, so these charms. Um, I started back in 2016 or 2017 when I came out here to Toronto. I'm originally from Alberta. Um, I wanted to make products for gamers um, back then when esports was kind of emerging in the market. So back then there was a tournament called Canada Cup and I attended that tournament to play in Street Fighter 
and at the time um, there was no vendors or artist alley in there so at the time I only heard just a few artists that started emerging in these markets and then I got really interested in that so I took a big leap of faith and designed characters that are familiar in the game and I wanted to make a product that was um, that was attached to their lanyards. Mm. So I thought maybe I have this really big idea, this might work. And ever since I took that risk, um, people were very supportive. Um, the community was so supportive. They came by, I said hello, I, I had a chat with them and they were so excited to come to my booth and um, make, make purchases on the, the items. It was, it was great. I had a really great experience from that. So is the majority of your sales are coming from you know, in-person events, or are you online as well, and the people are, are approaching you online for their characters? It's uh, mostly for conventions and esports um, places. So back in Alberta, we didn't have a lot of major tournaments over there. But whenever I come to Toronto, I know there's a big scene. <laughs> yeah, <sure>. So, <laughs> so coming over here, um, I'm able to have a booth and sell my wares um, at conventions like. Uh, Toronto Comic Con and Fan Expo. I came here a few times to sell at conventions and did pretty well. Um, I've also attended anime th Animathon, yes, uh -huh. and I sold some of my stuff there oh, as well. And there's a Fan Expo too, right? Is that that's a big uh, big event for you as well? Yes, Fan Expo. Um, I think it was two or three years ago. I I've attended and did a booth there, and I sold some of my charms and stickers for their yeah fan expo is back this year right so that's great I, I hope you're I hope we'll see you there as well um, is this all your own art as well uh, yes right now everything except just these two pieces these are from a good friend of mine who asked me to display his pieces for him and he wanted to try them out so I thought you know what let's give it a shot and see how you do. Um, but the rest of it is all yours. But everything else, yes, oh, is online. Awesome. So how did you get started with uh, uh, with fandom art? And uh, what, what's your medium? Like, is it all, it's all digital or, you know, yeah. yeah. It's mostly digital. Um, I also do traditional pieces as well. I usually start with a sketch and then I move over to Photoshop and I scan my pieces of art and then use digital painting over it. Then I send it over and have it printed. Um, so it's say, let's see. Sorry, what was the other question? <laughs> oh, just um, yeah. So uh, we can edit this, so don't worry about that. Um, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, do you have a do you have a representative of every character in the ultimate roster? Most of them. So. I think a couple years back I did a poll asking what people would like me to draw for at least the top 50 and I did about 50 of them or so and then it took me about a couple years a few years to um, create all the characters that people wanted and then I realized that there were some key characters that were missing that were like very important such as uh, Marth and for fortunately people wanted Lucina more than Marth at the time so now when I'm here people are asking where is Marth then I'm like oh well okay so I decided okay um, I need I need those kind of key characters in them because especially for Melee he's in that game and, and then the other titles he's been ever, ever since so so, do you follow uh, Pro Smash at all? I don't as much anymore. I just mostly focus on yeah. the um, creating my brand and trying to um, sell these pieces to the gamers themselves. Yeah, sure. So, uh, if you're not familiar with the bracket, that's okay. But who do you think is going to take the ultimate? Oh, yeah, melee in melee. You think? Okay. Yeah. yeah and uh, so, said uh, Hungry Box, and then for ultimate, any idea? Actually, I do not know much of it. That's okay. That's okay. Awesome. So we'll, uh, we'll get some, some shots of your uh, beautiful booth, and uh, we'll credit you in the, uh, in the piece. So thank you so much for the interview. Appreciate it.